morning. We'd like to invite you to take your seats. The program will start in just a few minutes. Again, we'd like to invite you to take your seats. The program will begin in just a few minutes. One, two, three. This is a time of sweet beginnings, a time when hearts and minds are free, and here within the walls of Archer, a wondrous world is ours to see. We'll take the path left you have traveled, and on our way Wow, <laughs> this is definitely a party. <laughs> Welcome to the Archer School for Girls grand opening of the Diana Meehan Center. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. So you know, the next time we do this, we'll be seated inside the multi-purpose gym and you won't be baking in the sun. How about that? So it, it has to be said, nevertheless, she persisted. <laughs> Woo! Yes, she did. What a spectacular moment for this school as evidenced by the incredible turnout we have today. Welcome to all our faculty, students, and their families, and a very special welcome to our newly admitted Archer families. Welcome home to our alumni. Yes, welcome new families. <laughs> welcome home to our alumni and alumni families, especially our pioneering alumni families who fought for Archer 20 years ago so that generations of girls who followed could attend school in this beautiful historic building. These are the alumni families who, along with our founders, gave us courage to fight for Archer once again so that we could come together today to celebrate, at last, 
the opening of this stunning building. I'd also like to welcome all the Archer grandparents who've joined us, former employees, Archer godmothers, and our many friends, all believers in the Archer School for Girls. Two past employees who were highly instrumental in making today possible are Rick Benfield and Mia Rill, and I'm so pleased they're here today to celebrate with us. We're honored to have two of our founders with us, Megan Calloway and Dr. Diana Meehan. Would you stand? Along with Vicki Shore, Archer's founders were determined and courageous risk takers who defied and overcame the intense opposition they faced when establishing this iconic campus on Sunset Boulevard. Today, in that same entrepreneurial spirit, Archer students challenge themselves to invent, create, and take bold intellectual risks. Likewise, our faculty are also bold risk takers who sustain the kind of dynamic, collaborative, and inclusive school culture our founders envisioned. Courage, creativity, collaboration, and of course, joy. These are all values in Archer's DNA, and for that, we have our founders to thank. So as many of you know, uh, this has been a long road. Our girls who go on Noel's backpacking trips would qualify what we've been through as level four terrain. <laughs> That's when you have to use your hands and feet to climb and navigate obstacles on the trail with a 40 pound pack on your back, by the way. Throughout it all, Archer's trustees, past and present, have gone to extraordinary lengths to ensure the triumph and success we're celebrating today. These are the heroes of Archer, who held the long view when those of us in the fray could not at times see past the obstacles. The angels of this school who gave without hesitation and with utter conviction that Archer's mission to empower future female leaders in an inclusive, future-facing environment was vital and worthy and indeed essential to this community. Would all our trustees, past and present, please stand? <laughs> Likewise, I wanna thank all our project partners who are here today. Our land use attorneys, Cindy Starrett and Beth Gordy of Latham and Watkins. Councilman Mike Bonin, Brent Wiblin of First Republic, Steve Matt and Stephen Montoya of Matt Construction, who delivered a building on time and on budget. <laughs> Our superhuman construction manager gods, Jeff Searock and Brian Galloway. And of course, our inspired architects, Craig Jamison and Joe Masada of Parallax Associates. You should know that Craig, Joe, Jeff, and Brian, our architectural and construction management team, did not for one second give up on Archer. When we were at our opponent's mercy, having to change course so many times, it felt like a labyrinth we'd never escape. They were steady and always ready with a solution even before we knew we had a problem. I am and will be forever profoundly grateful for their belief in and commitment to Archer, despite the many difficulties, including the ones that erupted yesterday afternoon. So, um, Craig and Joe, where are you? Craig, just raise your hand. I know you're, you're here somewhere. Woo! They're architectural poets. Craig and Joe, you made Archer's mission manifest in this building. From the understair seating you designed, because you noticed our girls always curled up together under the stair of the old north wing, 
to the stunning views across the red tile roofs of the historic building, to the ingenious use of light-filled space that honors Archer's commitment to collaboration, creativity, and innovation, you have exceeded every expectation we had for what this new academic center could be. It's true that when we set out to design the new academic center, it was imperative that our historic home remain the centerpiece and jewel of the campus, a paean to our storied past, our alumni, and the culture of sisterhood at the heart of our school. Parallax accomplished that and more. As you'll see, there is a beautiful interplay between old and new from within the campus, while the view of our historic building from Sunset Boulevard remains unspoiled. To watch my colleagues on the senior administrative team, the faculty, staff, and facilities crew take such delight in what we have accomplished together has brought me extraordinary joy. What we truly cannot wait to see, of course, is the unbridled joy of our students when they finally get to move into their 33 new classrooms, the experimental black box theater, the fitness and training center, the amphitheater, and the many new spaces for students to connect, dream, create, and just be Archer girls. Oh, and we wouldn't be, yes, yes. <laughs> It has to be said that uh, we wouldn't be the Archer School for Food if I didn't mention the new teaching kitchen and servery. So we're very excited about that too. Uh, many have asked why this has been such a difficult journey. I wish I had a reasonable explanation. Uh, a few weeks ago, I saw the upper school play Blue Stockings. Phenomenal production that left the audience speechless. The program notes written by our students read, while many women today have the opportunity to attend college and graduate, few know that at one point in history, women weren't even allowed to earn a degree. Jessica Swale's Blue Stockings tells the story of the women at Girton College, the first women's college at Cambridge University, and their male allies as they try to gain the right to graduate in 1896 Britain. The young female students must endure belittlement and humiliation from the male professors and work twice as hard as the male students to prove themselves worthy of degrees. Much like Archer girls, they form a sisterhood, discover their voices, and of course, learn about the world around them. When the play ended, a postscript was projected that noted, it took another 50 years before women at Girton were granted degrees in 1948. The audience gasped. I guess they'd forgotten that it took 80 years for women in this country to earn the right to vote, but that aside. Um, despite the obvious progress we've made since 1896, at this rate, it will take us over 100 years to achieve gender parity in the workplace and over 200 years to achieve economic parity. Inequality persists in almost every sector and is pervasive in leadership. Archer makes clear to our students that women belong on equal footing with men in all aspects of their lives. And central to Archer's mission is not only preparing women to lead, but to recognize and rise above gender bias. A Harvard study, The Price of Power, asserts that when women try to advance or seek positions of power, they are perceived as less competent and uncaring, and oftentimes met with feelings of contempt and moral outrage. Like so many other women's institutions, the bar has been set higher for Archer. After a contentious four-year entitlement process, where our opponent's opening bid was move the school or put it underground, and during which many of you wrote impassioned letters, spoke at hearings, knocked on doors, the city of Los Angeles granted unanimous approval for Archer's campus plan, but with an unprecedented requirement for a school. The entire plan, academic center, gymnasium, parking, performing arts center, and fine arts center, all had to be completed in just 36 months, with a moratorium on building until the year 2040. We're here celebrating the opening of this new building because the challenges we face continue to motivate us. As we tell our girls, when you face a glass ceiling, you can turn back or you can break through. We are bound as leaders and investors of Archer to succeed. And I don't think it's going to take us 50 years.
Archer Senior, Madison Tyler, <laughs> Assistant Director of Blue Stockings wrote the following. As a senior, my experience working on the show has only deepened my appreciation for Archer and the education I've received. As I prepare to head off to college in the fall, I know I'll face new challenges and obstacles. People will underestimate me. They will try to make me small. They will try to invalidate my experience and knowledge. But what they will not know is that I am armed with my intellect and the strength of all those women who came before me and all those who stand beside me. With the elegant confidence of young women like Madison, the opening of the Diana Meehan Center says to this community, the Archer School for Girls is here to stay. Thank you. <laughs> it is my great pleasure to introduce Archer alumna and member of the first graduating class of 2001, Lauren Finkelstein. I heard one of the students this morning say, this looks like a real high school, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, when pe most people are told they're about to hear someone speak from a school's first graduating class, they're usually expecting someone who is really, really, well, old. <laughs> old and uh, also somewhat hopefully incredibly wise. While my younger high school self would have most certainly thought I was relatively ancient today, you can see I'm in fact not at all that old. <laughs> and while I can't confirm just how wise I may be, uh, being asked to speak today has at the very least brought about some reflections. I have the unique privilege of speaking to you today as not only an alumna from the very first class, but as a member of the alumni board, board of trustees, and my most favorite title of all, future parent of an Archer girl. <laughs> Albeit <laughs> the class of 2034. <laughs> During my time at Archer, our class was designated varying nicknames ranging from the humorous but true gu guinea pig class <laughs> to my favorite and the one that ultimately stuck, the pioneer class. Let me be clear, I don't take this designation lightly. Whether it may be a reflection of how much I love this place or a sense of pride and responsibility owing to all that being a pioneer represents, they literally cannot keep me away. I couldn't be more honored to be standing in front of you today. I am so proud to be here and represent my fellow alumni. Being part of Archer's early years, I remember our fledgling days in the Palisades. Let me paint you a picture. We were situated across two makeshift campuses, one of which was a converted church, and because we were the first class, unique circumstances were afforded to us, such as, quite literally, being the senior class all the time. <laughs> there was never anyone above us to pave the way or provide a blueprint on what had been done before, but that was also part of the fun. And athletics, for example, in the early days, if you wanted to play a sport, you were automatically on the team, <laughs> simply because you tried out. This very fact allows me to stand here and tell you I was once on the basketball team at Archer. <laughs> Despite the fact I didn't te technically know what a key was and most certainly couldn't make a basket to save my life. <laughs> this remains true today. <laughs> yes, we were small back then, 28 in our founding class to be exact, 18 in the class below us. But we were mighty. It was a long road to make this Brentwood campus our home, but we persevered, determined and unwavering. We were led by founders whose pioneering vision we continue to emulate today, but even back then, it was easy to see what a magical and unique place Archer already was and today continues to be. Here we are, 20 years later, gathered at Archer's permanent and beautiful home, what was once known as the Eastern Star Building, or for you film aficionados out there, the scene of the rest home in the movie Chinatown. <laughs> the saying, if these walls could talk, is an understatement. We are all pioneers, 
each and every one of us has and continues to do our part to make Archer the school it is and the school it will be. Our student community is made up of future scientists and STEM explorers, artists, athletes, and activists, rule breakers, change makers. The ushering in of the academic center will help create new student thought leaders, innovation seekers, and take learning to the next level, the Archer way. Buildings represent the spirit of a place. Archer, its founders, alumni, parents, faculty, and community at large have something even greater that can't ever be contained, a pioneering spirit. Whether you're the class of 2001, or 2019, or 2034, Poppy Finkelstein, <laughs> to be a member of this community is forever, and we will always call Archer home. I am proud of Archer, its history, its present, and its future. I am, through and through, an Archer girl. I am Archer proud. Thank you, thank you, hello. Good afternoon and welcome on this glorious day and the opening of the Dianamian Academic Center. <clears throat> I'm Frank Marshall, chairman of the Archer Board of Trustees and also known as DJ Master Frank. We'll be spinning some tunes later in the back, so I hope you can stay. Um, this is really such a wonderful day because my wife Kathy and I have been involved in Archer since its inception. And we will always remember the day when our close friends, Gary David Goldberg and Do Dr. Diana Meehan, said to us at one of their famous St. Paddy's Day parties <laughs> that they were thinking of moving back east. As an educator, Diana knew back in 1994 that girls in schools in LA were undermined and overlooked, and they wanted something better for their youngest daughter, Kaylin. However, it turned out that Kaylin and her big sister, Shauna, were not too keen on this idea of moving. That must have been a wonderful dinner conversation. <laughs> So Diana, always a big thinker and problem solver, decided the simple solution was just to create a new school here in Los Angeles. <laughs> Her vision for that school was that decisions and curriculum should be based on current research on the best way for girls to learn, develop, and thrive. Simple, right? So 24 years ago, Dr. Meehan, along with Megan Calloway and Victoria Shore, who also had daughters about to enter middle, middle school, founded the Archer School for Girls, which opened its doors in a converted dance studio in the Palisades with just over 30 sixth and seventh grade students. When Kathy and I attended our first recital there, I remember being so proud of a sixth grader who we had sponsored playing the violin in a quartet and how happy and enthusiastic all of the girls were. The idea seemed to be working. But Diana and Gary had a bigger dream, and that was for a bigger school, one that would serve both middle and high school students. And thus began the first battle for the building, which was to acquire the Eastern Star Home for Women, the grounds on which we are sitting and standing today. But the resistance to that project was so intense that the local council women at the time told Gary that the neighborhood was acting as if he and Diana wanted to turn the building into a nuclear waste dump, not a school. <laughs> Sound familiar? But Gary thrived on competition and challenges, and he and Diana's persistence, sacrifice, and determination finally won out, and the building was secured in 1999. And then hospital rooms were converted into classrooms, and this wonderfully charming building began to provide the one-of-a-kind learning environment Diana Gary, the founders, had always hoped for. And then nine years ago, 
nine years ago, we began the second battle for the building, the one back there. And I'm happy to, and proud to say today that we prevailed again. <clears throat> so after all that time, when Elizabeth and asked Kathy and I who we would like to dedicate the new Archer Academic Center to, it seemed only natural and appropriate that it be our dear Irish friend, <laughs> whose ultimate dream has finally been realized here today. And so I'd like to invite Dr. Diana Meehan to come forward to accept this honor. I'm honored, I'm humbled, and if I say any more, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Gary used to say, a lot of tears at the Archer School. <laughs> and he was right. How many people have done the tour? Raise your hand, your hands. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> it's amazing. I'd like to use another word that precedes that, but I'm trying to... <laughs> my, my grandson is here and my granddaughter, so... It's an interpretation of who Archer is. And as a clue to who Archer is, I asked a ninth grade student, and she said, I'm here, I find myself in an intellectual, philosophical, emotional community. And she said, and that's amazing. Community we know from the research in the 1990s, as well as a study that confirmed the same results in 2018, is a way that girls learn. It is the best way that girls learn. Because community is about connection. Community is about shared values. I asked another student what the shared values were here. And she said, hard work, high expectations, and knowing that your sister has, her ba has your back. And I couldn't have said it better. It's not only shared values, but it's context that gives meaning to competition. Yes, they compete, but they compete as a team. The new academic center is a very cool, high-tech building, both solid foundation and soaring expectation. And Craig and Joe got it. Thank you. It has, as Elizabeth mentioned, and some of you may have seen, it has nooks and crannies, which will have pillows for small groups of girls to gather, to connect, to explore, and to help each other. It also has classrooms of many configurations and flexible purpose. And light, light, light. There is an Irish blessing, of course. <laughs> May you have light in your life, light outside, light within. At Archer, 
that's built right in. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. You are inspiring always, always. Um, I think there's another Irish blessing that you've shared with me that goes like this. May your friends be near you, your students revere you, and all your competitors seriously fear you. <laughs> uh, cities are made great by their nonprofit institutions. The institutions that invest in and elevate humanity are hospitals, museums, theaters, and of course our schools. It is the very purpose of a school and its buildings to stand as an eloquent reminder of all our fullest potential as human beings. In this sense, I believe that schools are the most important buildings that we build. By investing in Archer, you are investing in this city. You are investing in the potential of our daughters and in humanity itself. To date, this incredible community has raised $32.5 million. This is thanks to the extraordinary generosity of our lead donors and especially our board of trustees who have given over 25 million or 77% of all funds raised to date. We hope everyone in, in this community will consider being a part of this historic moment. Um, we have additional funds to raise, about two and a half million, and you'll receive a request for support, and gifts will be recognized with engraved paver in one of the two courtyards that you've toured today. And there's information in the program if you want to know more. I thank you in advance for your support and belief in the Archer School for Girls. I could not be more grateful. There is so much love for this place, and only love could have built that. So thank you, everyone. We're going to do a little ceremonial ribbon cutting, so if our students would come on up. Okay, there. 